sure most of you are here from TikTok, but if you're not, welcome. And if you are new here, I own a small chocolate covered strawberry business. And recently I've been on TikTok and people have been asking me for tips and tricks on how I do my stuff and what I use and stuff like that. So this channel will mainly be used for tips, tricks, tutorials, just anything involving my strawberries and how I do what I do. So I got a lot of requests to do a tutorial on strawberry shortcake crumble. So today I will be making that crumble along with how to dip and use the crumble and package your strawberries as if it was a real order. So let's get started. So to start off our strawberry shortcake crumble, you're going to want to make sure that your oven is preheated to 350 degrees. Um, you're also going to need two containers. They don't have to be the same size. I'm using cake pans. Uh, flour, butter, and a vanilla jello or pudding, and a strawberry jello. This one has to be jello, not a pudding. The vanilla one can be a pudding and or jello. Okay, so first you're gonna start off by adding a half cup of flour to each container. Then you are gonna wanna grab your vanilla mix and your strawberry mix, and you're gonna add one pack to each container. Add the vanilla. Then you're going to go in with any butter of your choosing and you are going to add four teaspoons to each container. fork like this pushing on the butter in a downward mo motion just incorporating everything together all the way around until everything is combined and it doesn't have to, the butter does not have to completely disappear if there's a little bit of lumps that's okay it will bake when you put it in the oven The big chunks of butter are gone. You can just go around and just make sure both the vanilla and the flour mix are mixing together. So once you get here, like this yellowy tan color, you can feel free to move on to the next one. And again, you're just gonna do the same thing, holding your fork downwards. You're just gonna wanna go around, smashing all the butter into the mix. butter to be completely vanished just as long as it's incorporated mostly all of it then you are good to be done okay so once you have both of your mixes incorporated you're going to want to grab a sheet pan and parchment paper and you're just going to cut off the amount of like the length of your sheet pan 
then you're just gonna set it down. All the extra is fine anyways because you are going to smooth it out. And you're just going to start by pouring a little bit of your strawberry one. And a little bit of your vanilla one. And once that's done, you're, you can use both forks, you can use your hands or whatever. I don't have gloves right now, so I'm just going to use both my forks and just incorporate that together. And then you're just going to do that again until everything is incorporated. So let me just do that. It doesn't have to be perfect, just as flat as you can get it. So now that I got it nice and flat, you're going to want to put it in your oven for seven minutes. You don't want to leave this in any longer or any less because it will not cool correctly and it will not give you the right texture you're looking for and it could over bake and burn. So again, I'm gonna put this in my oven at 350 degrees for seven minutes and then we'll be right back. Okay, so I did forget one thing. So after you have it in your oven for seven minutes at 350 degrees, as soon as that timer goes off, you're gonna stick this in your freezer for five minutes. Um, hot pan and all. As soon as it's done and ready, you're gonna put it in the freezer for five minutes. So mine has been in the freezer for five minutes and this is how it looks. So what you want is when you cut it to look like little candy, this is how it looks. You're just gonna crumble it up and it's just gonna crumble. You're just gonna do that, rip it piece by piece and it's just gonna come off like little candy bars. You're just gonna grab it and crumble it. You're not gonna get it super fine with your hands just because there is stickier chunks, harder chunks. You're just gonna get it as much as you can. So let me do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so now that I got that as crumbled as I possibly can, this is how it looks. You see how there's the bigger pieces and then there's like the super just fine pieces. You're gonna wanna stick this in a blender or like food processor, but not for too long. So let me go get mine real quick and I'll be right back. Okay, so this is the contraption that I'm using. I don't know what this is called. This was a gift from my grandma. <laughs> so I'm just gonna put everything in here. And I'm just gonna put a little bit. I'm actually gonna put it all in here. But again, if you have a blender or food processor, you are more than welcome to use that. bottom was more of the fine cookie crumble but there's still a lot of big pieces so I'm just gonna put this on and I'm gonna, the way that this one works is you pull this little thing right here and it'll cut it for you so I'm just gonna do like maybe three pulls and see how it is then so I'm still gonna put it in a sifter and sift it back out onto the parchment paper Okay, 
Okay, so I did it like seven times and I think I like how it looks now. So I'm gonna get a sifter and I'm just gonna sift it out one last time onto the parchment paper. So I'm just gonna take this out. And like I said, with my sifter, one last time, I am gonna sift it back out onto my parchment paper.
your chocolate and container you use to melt your chocolate. So this is a luminary glass. I get it from Dollar Tree as well. Um, these keep my chocolate very warm and melt hid throughout my um, dipping process and they cook very well in the microwave. And the chocolate that I will be using today is the Walmart brand Almond Bar. Um, you can get this at Walmart. I haven't seen seen it anywhere else. Um, it is a Walmart brand, so you will only find it at Walmart. Or you could use Candy Melt. Um, there's also Merkin's chocolate. Any chocolate of your choosing. Just make sure it's melted, but today I will be using this one. Um, I already have one open, so what I'm gonna do from here is I'm gonna cut three pieces, I'm gonna put it in my jar, put it in the microwave, and then I'll be back. Okay, so now that your chocolate is melted, you're gonna want it at this consistency, like the runny, not super thick. This will be super helpful when dipping your berries. You're also gonna wanna choose 12 berries. Um, you can choose as many as you want. I'm doing 12 for the sake that we're packaging a pretend order. Choose any 12 that you feel were, will suit your um, order best. I chose these um, medium little ones. Um, now what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna grab your strawberry and up top, you're just gonna stick in two toothpicks, kind of where the stem is. Um, you're just gonna stick it right next to them and you are just gonna lift up the stem and kind of wrap it around the toothpick so your stem stays out of the way of your strawberry and the chocolate. So you're just gonna do that with every single strawberry. Okay, so now that all your strawberries look like this, you're gonna go in with your chocolate and you are going to start dipping them. So the way that I dip them that I feel is the easiest for me is when I go in to dip, I kind of hold the stems with the toothpick and I kind of twist it around so it kind of gets stuck to the toothpick. This one has pretty good stems that stay up by themselves, so I can just easily put it in, dip it. I dip all the way. So once you're in like this, you're just going to go in a circular motion so you get every inch of the strawberry. And once you feel like your strawberry is covered enough, you're just going to take it out and you're just going to shake off all the excess. You're not gonna let it get completely dry or shake off every single bit of excess chocolate. You're just gonna wanna get like let it get a little bit tacky almost. So once, once you see that the drips are getting a little bit less, you're fine to just lift it up and you're just gonna grab your crumble and you're just gonna roll it in. Just gonna roll in all the crumble, making sure every bit of the strawberry is covered so here you can see a little bit of where there was too much chocolate this little bump you can easily just smooth it out tap it and there's your strawberry so let me find one like this one the stems are a little bit droopy so it could get in the way of your chocolate you're just gonna grab it hold them grab your chocolate and you are just gonna dip in and in a circular motion, going around, making sure everything is covered. And you are just gonna take it out, shake off in like this side to side motion. So it's all coming down in a straight line and not one half will have more chocolate than the other. Gonna let it come off, gonna let it get a little bit tacky. Bring it in and again, just roll your strawberry in the crumble. If you don't feel like touching it with your finger, you can kind of smooth it out with the crumble itself. Just let it get smooth. And there's your strawberry. So I'm just gonna do one with super wet chocolate just to show you um, how it would look if you didn't shake off the excess of your berry. So again, just stick your toothpicks in, lift up the stems. If you just dip it in, in a circular motion, and you just take it out, shake it like twice, see how it's still super runny when I hold it up like this? When you do that and you go to your uh, crumble and you do this, 
nothing sticks because the chocolate is just too runny and it all falls off. And you're gonna have chocolate bits in your crumble and it's not gonna get that smooth finish that you want. And it's just gonna be droopy like this and it's not gonna stick and give you that nice smooth finish that you're looking for. So let me do that with all the strawberries and then we will go into packaging the order. strawberry this one is already dried so you don't need to worry about putting them in the fridge or anything like that because if you do put them in the fridge they will start to sweat making the strawberry weak and then the crumble can start falling off before it even gets to your customer so you want to try to avoid the refrigerator at all costs unless you have a lot of orders that day and you made this order like two hours before then you can put it in the fridge but just make sure to take it out and let it thaw out because when it goes from a room temperature climate to a cold temperature climate back to room temperature it kind of tends to sweat and make your strawberry weak so just try to keep them just try to keep them like in a neutral place like if you just leave them on your kitchen counter and your kitchen's pretty fresh that would be okay too if you just want to leave your window open um that should be fine you know ac on whatever um i know it kind of doesn't make sense right now in the cold but right now that it is cold your house is the perfect temperature to kind of just leave them out um, as long as you don't have the heater on just so you don't mess up your order before it even gets to your customer. So after you get here, I go in with my cupcake liners and I just start to, I kind of just cup them in my hand, put them in, rip the toothpick out. You can rip the toothpicks out before, um, however you like. I just find it easier for myself to just put them in, hold it, rip the toothpick out. So then you have your little strawberries in your cupcake liner. So let me just do that with all of them. cross-contamination which is why I don't use them I wash my hands almost after everything that I do um, as soon as I wash my strawberries I wash my hands dip my strawberries wash my hands anything I touch involving my strawberries I like to wash my hands and just keep my hands kind of away from my persona like my hair eyes face anything like that um, again it is optional you can use them you don't have to use them it's all up to you and what you feel as long as your customers are happy and you know you're not doing anything to um, hurt them stuff like that. It is all up to you. Uh, this is a practice set So it won't be going out to anyone but for future reference it is all up to you and what you feel comfortable with doing So what I use to package my orders is I use this brown box 
Um, I can't remember the name of the shop. I will try to look for it and link it in the description. Um, but this is a brown box that I use along with some fluff inside. You don't have to put this. You can just put it, like put it on the just the box itself, or you can put tissue paper under. I've seen people use tissue paper. Um, I've seen people use this crinkle paper. Um, I call this fluff. You can get it at your any any local like Dollar Tree, Walmart, any party or craft store. You can get this. I like to use. The fluff because I feel like it kind of just adds a little like base for your strawberries to lay on rather than just in the box itself because if you kind of lay them in the box just alone without anything in your strawberries can fly around and like that when you have them in the fluff you can kind of like create a little spot for your strawberry to kind of snuggle into so it won't be um, roaming around during transportation stuff like that and this one has a little clear window so you can kind of see your berries as um, kind of in a nicer way rather than you don't know what's in there if it was just all closed off. And I do use a little sticker up top with my Instagram handle and my Snapchat handle um, for my berries and stuff like that. It's a little sticker I had made for your business. Um, it's not a necessity right away. You can always hand write a thank you note. Um, get little thank you stickers off Amazon in bulk or whatever. I personally uh, got these made for this reason just so people if they're not following you can follow you share with other people just so it's easier um, But again use what you prefer so In my box, I'm just gonna open it up kind of spread out the fluff So it's kind of even kind of push it down a little bit and Then just put my strawberries in inside But when you have something like this, you can always put stuff in here to kind of be as fillers and kind of just enhance your packaging a little bit just so it looks a little bit nicer. So when I usually have room like this, I like to go in with these little chocolates and kind of just add them, you know, sparingly so it looks nice but still pretty full. And it always makes your customers happy when they get a little bit more than what they asked for. And I feel like these just look a little bit nicer with any order. So I'm just gonna add them next to them. And then if you feel like any of them look weird or if you wanna organize them by size or whatever you feel like, you don't have to do 444, you can do whatever you please. I like to package mine this way and this is the final result. subscribe and please leave a comment about what you guys thought about the quality of this video if it was too confusing to all over the place I would love some honest feedback I would also love for you guys to comment if you guys need help with any tips tricks if you guys would like to see me recreate anything do a video on anything else I would really appreciate it I will leave my Instagram and TikTok below so you can also get um, different tutorials that aren't on my YouTube channel but again thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you on the next one thank you